Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to review a bit of integration that you should have learned in a previous calculus course. However, just to make sure we're all on the same page, uh, we'll start with a brief review of integration. So in this video, we'll learn the definition of the definite integral of a function. We'll be able to interpret the definite integral of a function as the signed area under the curve, and we'll apply properties of definite integrals to compute values of those definite integrals. So let's start with the definition. Uh, you may have, have seen, again, some of this before, uh, but suppose we take a function f, which is a nice continuous function, so no jumps, no asymptotes, nothing like that, nice and continuous on a closed interval a to b. Then we can define the definite integral of that function from a to b as, so the, the first piece you see here, right, is just the, the integral from a to b of f of t dt. That's just some notation that denotes we're talking about the definite integral. And then you see these uh, next two equations, which are the limits of these sums. Uh, and you might remember these as being uh, types of, of sums called Riemann sums. So these two different things represent Riemann sums. And uh, in particular, right, you probably learned about sort of maybe a left-hand rule and a right-hand rule for computing Riemann sums. Uh, and so uh, in particular, uh, this, this first one here, uh, this would be a right-hand sum, whereas the second one would be a left-hand sum. Blue doesn't show up super well, but... Um, so uh, let's see, what, what are the ideas? So you have these big equations, but sort of what are the ideas here? So uh, fundamentally, I can think of the problem of finding a definite integral as finding the area under some curve. So imagine I have this curve, uh, this function plotted here, and let's say that I wanted to find the uh, area under the curve from some point A, to some other point, say, uh, let's come over here, say a point B here. So if I want to find the, the area under this curve, one way to do that, um, you know, we don't have a nice formula like, say, for example, the area we have for the area of a circle. But I could take uh, the area under this curve and I could think of it uh, as being made up of sort of a bunch of little rectangles. So, right, I could draw sort of there's one rectangle, then go up to my function value. Here's another rectangle. So here I'm using sort of a, a left-hand rule, right? And so I can construct these Riemann sums uh, by sort of taking these, these rectangles and uh, filling the area under here. Now, um, you can see here, right, this is just an approximation, right? There's, there's some area sort of right in here that I've missed, right? But as I make these rectangles narrower and narrower, right, I ought to be getting closer and closer to the actual area under this curve. Okay, So that's exactly what uh, the Riemann sums are doing. They're constructing these rectangles, uh, and they're taking a limit as the bases of those rectangles get smaller and smaller. As you take more and more rectangles, the bases are getting smaller and smaller, and so uh, you ought to be approaching the actual value of the integral. So uh, let's say... Right, we're looking at, um, sorry. Uh, let's say we're looking again at this area from some point A, here's A, over here to some point B. Okay. And again, I mentioned we can sort of think of the integral as being the area under this curve. Now, um, it's not exactly the area under the curve, in part because we have this portion here that's actually below the axis. Okay. So if we were just to find the area under the curve, so I would have that area plus, then I would have sort of this area up here. And sorry, I'm trying to trace along this as well as I can. So we would have sort of these two areas here. Okay. Now, 
uh, if we were to just find these areas, right, these would both be positive numbers. Area is always a positive number. And so we would say, um, you know, we have the sort of pink area and the green area. Okay. However, we don't want to think of the definite integral in quite that way. So if this is my function, uh, if this function here is, say, we call this function f. Okay. Then what we're really trying to understand is, you know, what is the integral from a to b of f of t dt. Okay. Well, in this case, I want it to count area that's above the axis as positive area. So I can think of this as being some area a, and I want that to count as positive area. But I want this area below the axis, so let's call it b, to sort of count as negative area. So in this case, uh, the actual value of the integral here would be a minus b. So again, area above the axis is positive area. Area below the axis we sort of think of as being negative area, even though typically we wouldn't think of area as being negative. Okay. So we call this signed area. And the integral, the definite integral of f from a to b gives us the signed area under the curve from a to b. That's exactly what the Riemann sum definition uh, gives us. All right. Now, um, we want to understand how to compute these things. In fact, much of the first uh, bit of this course is going to be focused on how to actually compute uh, definite integrals. And in order to do that, we're going to need to sort of understand, you know, some properties. Uh, and let's start by sort of thinking about things very geometrically. Okay, so uh, imagine you were asked to find the integral from 0 to 2 of 1 minus 2x dx exactly. So just straight from the definition, right, I could think of this as representing area under a curve. Okay? And so if I were to think about plotting this function, so what would this look like? So if this is 1, so 1 minus 2x is a linear function. Uh, it has a y-intercept of 1, and then a slope of negative 2, uh, and we're going from 0 to 2. So when I go over 1, right, then I'll go down 2, so I'll be at negative 1, and uh, then if I go over 1 more, I'll go down 2 more, and I'll be at negative 3. So this function is going to be sort of very steep. And maybe let me actually change my scale slightly to help us here. So this is 1. We can just think of this as being negative 3, and this as being a 2, right? It's a line. So our scale is not exactly even, but that's OK, right? So if I think about wanting to calculate the value of this definite integral, then I really want to figure out the area of this figure here, OK? But again, I need to be careful uh, because I, I need to think about signed areas. So I need to think about this area above the axis. And then I need to think about this area below the axis. Okay. So uh, just using a bit of, of geometry here, uh, the zero here will be at one half. Okay. Right. So when x is equal to one half, this function will be zero. And so this is just a triangle. So triangle with height one and base one half. So its area is one half base times height. So its area is one fourth. Looking at this green triangle, it has a base of, so if I come over here, I'm calculating from zero to two. Again, be careful that this is not all evenly spaced. So this has a base here of two or four halves minus one half. So it has a base of three halves. And it has a height here of three, right? Or negative three, right? But we're thinking of just area. We'll deal with the signed issue later. So it has an area of one half base times height. Four nine fourths. So now if I want to actually compute the value of this integral, so I now want the integral 
from zero to two of one minus two X DX. Well, if I think of this assigned area, that's gonna be the area above the axis minus the area below the axis or negative eight fourths, which is equal to negative two. Right. So from purely geometric notions, we're able to find the value of this definite integral exactly. Now, throughout this course, uh, you're going to see occasional knowledge checks. So here's a knowledge check. This is a chance for you to apply what we've just done on our own. So the video will now pause and you'll actually be given a chance in a moment to enter your answer to this problem. So in this problem, I'd like you to find the integral from one to three of two minus three X DX exactly. All right, now that you've had a chance to try it out on your own, uh, let's take a look at this. So using ideas similar to before, if we think about plotting this function, So this function starts at two, or sorry, it starts at two when X is zero. It starts at two when X is zero. And by the time X gets to three, it's actually up at a value of 11. It would be 11, and it's a linear function again, so it looks something like this. Uh, in this case, our area is going to be entirely above the axis, which actually makes this problem a little bit simpler than others we've looked at. Uh, but now we're going to be going from 1. Now, 1, uh, this has a value of 5, uh, to 3, where we have a value of 11. So we're actually trying to compute here this area. Now, if you actually look at this in sort of the right way, this is a, actually a trapezoid. Right, And so to find the area of a trapezoid, its area is the average of the two bases times the height. And so if I look at this in the right way, the height is sitting here. Okay. And there's a base here and a base here. And so this area is one half, this first base, that's gonna be the function value at one. So at one, this has a value of five. B2 is the function value at three. At three, it has a value of 11 times the height. And the height down here is just the distance between one and three, which is two. And so now if I compute this, I will get 16. So our answer, the integral from 1 to 3 of 2 plus 3x dx is equal to 16. Now, uh, as we compute these things, uh, we might want sort of alternate ways of, of thinking about things. So, uh, for example, there's another way I could have thought of this. So if I think about the function two plus three X, I really could have thought about first taking the area under the curve, oh, down some. I could have first calculated the area under two, and then I could have calculated the area under three X. And the reason that this works geometrically, right? if I sort of think about it, I had this function here uh, roughly, which was uh, 2 plus 3x. That's really like taking the function, a different color that will contrast a little better here. It's really like taking the function 2 and the function 3x, Right? And I'm really just taking the function 3x and shifting it up right by the 2. So instead of finding the area under the green curve between 1 and 3, I could have found 
the area under two between say one and three, and then the area under three X between one and three, and added those areas together, that would have given me the same as had I just calculated this whole area to begin with. Okay. Another way to see this visually by just looking at sort of the, the single function here is that I can actually decompose this region. I'm trying to find the area of this region. I can decompose it into one part that's just at height two. And then the rest of this uh, is really the contribution of the three X function. So uh, I can actually break this up. Now, in this case, right, if I was going to calculate, this would be the area under the constant function two from one to three. Well, if you look at that, that's that's just a rectangle, right? A rectangle with height two and base two. It's actually a square. And so that has area four. If I look over here, right, and I'm going to do three X from one to three, that's again going to be a trapezoid. That's going to be a trapezoid with base two, sorry, with height two, uh, the first base being, so this is three X, that's just three, and this is nine. So this has area one half, three plus nine times two, or 12. And now, I note that if I add 4 and 12 together, that gives me 16. So, right, this is the contribution that gives us 4. This contributes 12 for a total of 16. So there are always multiple ways to, to do these things. And in fact, uh, this is an example of a property of definite integrals uh, that we can talk about. And in fact, we're gonna talk about several properties of definite integrals. Each of them essentially follows from this geometric notion of integration. So uh, going through each of these, uh, the first property uh, essentially says, if I switch the limits of integration, so here I have an integral from A to B, if I switch that from A to B to B to A, then I just pick up a negative sign. Right? So the way to think about this is basically if instead of moving in the positive direction, I started moving in the opposite direction, right, in the negative direction, that's going to negate my integral. Okay? This is not one that we use a ton, but it is helpful from time to time. The second property here says if I have the integral from A to B of some function, then I can rewrite that as the integral from A to C plus the integral from C to B. Thinking about this visually, if I have some function f, right, and I want to find its integral from, say, A to B, so in this case, I'm really trying to find this area under the curve. I could instead pick some intermediate point, call it C. And I could instead first calculate this pink area. So this pink area would be the integral from A to C of f of t dt. Then I could come here and I could calculate this orange area. Well, this orange area would be the integral from C to B of f of t dt. And if I add those two together, those ought to get me the whole original green area, which was the integral from A to B of f, right? So this essentially says you can sort of break up your the domain over which you're integrating into two different pieces by picking some point C in between. Uh, the third property actually is very much like uh, what we were just talking about, right? If I have uh, the sum of two different things that I'm integrating, I can rewrite that as the integral of each piece. So we sometimes say this as the sum of the integral is the integral of the sum. So here we have an integral of a sum of two things. That's the same as the sum of the integral of each piece. Okay. 
So you can break up integrals over sums. This is a helpful property we'll use quite a bit. It also works for differences. That's why we have a plus or minus here. And then finally, uh, you'll see this last property, which essentially says if I have the integral of something where I have a constant C, I can actually pull that constant C outside of the integral sitting here. Okay. These are all helpful properties. Hopefully, these are things you've seen before, uh, but they are properties of integrals that we'll be using quite a bit throughout this course. All right. So using these properties, we can actually uh, make life a little simpler for ourselves sometimes. So uh, suppose that I wanted to find the integral from 0 to 2 of 3 times f of t minus 1. Given that I know that the integral from 0 to 1 of f of t dt is equal to 1, and the integral from 2 to 1 of f of t dt is equal to 3. Now, seemingly, there's a lot of pieces going on here. I may not be immediately sure how to use these. Anytime we see a more complex problem like this, we want to just start by writing down what it is we're actually trying to find, right? So in this case, I'm trying to find the integral, the integral from 0 to 2 of 3 f of t minus 1 dt. Now, the first thing I can do here is I can use uh, my properties of integrals. So I can rewrite this as the integral from 0 to 2 of 3 f of t. Oops, that fell off. 3 f of t dt minus the integral from 0 to 2 of 1 dt. Now, if I look at this first term, I, I have just this constant 3 sitting here, my last property of definite integral, so I can pull that constant out. And now if I look at this last piece, uh, this is actually a, a specific function. Right? So if I just think momentarily about this piece, right? uh, this is integrating from 0 to 2, the constant function 1. Well, that's just a rectangle. Right? It has base 2, height 1. So it has an area of 2. So this integral is just 2. And now, really, what we need to figure out is this. So uh, let's, let's give ourselves a moment. Let's think about this. So now, this is where I might go back and say, OK, what was I given? Well, I was given that the integral from 0 to 1 of f of t dt was 1, and the integral from 2 to 1 of f of t dt is equal to 3. So if I come off to the side here for a second, right? I want the integral from 0 to 2 of f of t dt. I could write that as the integral from 0 to 1 of f of t dt, which I'm given, plus the integral from 1 to 2 of f of t dt. Now, I was not given that. I was not given the integral from 1 to 2, but I was given the integral from 2 to 1. So this ought to be the integral from 0 to 1 of f of t dt. Now, this would be the same as minus the integral from 2 to 1 of f of t dt, which I was given. And so now if I combine this, I was given that this first integral was 1 minus this last integral was 3. And so now I have that the integral from 0 to 2 of f of t dt is equal to negative 2. That's going to come over here. Let's separate this off. So now the value of this is 3 times negative 2 minus 2, which would be negative 6 minus 2, which is negative 8. So using properties of integrals, we're able to simplify uh, and evaluate integrals of more complicated composition functions uh, by knowing some basic facts about the integrals of the parts.
Now, in that case, right, you didn't know the, the specific function, right? I, I never told you what f of t was. I just told you some information about the integral. But we could also uh, do these, these same sorts of things with, like, specific functions, right? So right now, we don't really know exactly how we would calculate the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of tangent of x dx. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you that it's natural log of 2 over 2. So given that information, I'd like you to check your knowledge uh, by trying to evaluate the integral, the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of 1 plus 4 tangent of x dx. So use those properties of derivatives, sorry, of definite integrals uh, to see if you can evaluate this integral. Again, the video is going to pause here. You'll be given a chance to try this yourself, uh, and then we'll go from there. All right. Great. So let's see if we can evaluate this integral. So we want to evaluate the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of 1 plus 4 tangent of x dx. So I can first break up that sum. And now I can pull this constant 4 out front. Now again, this first part, this is the integral of the constant function 1 from 0 to pi over 4. If I were to draw a quick picture, right, height 1 from 0 to pi over 4. And this is just a rectangle. It has base pi over 4 and height 1. So this area is just pi over 4. Now I have plus 4 times this value. So you were given that the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of tangent of x is natural log of 2 over 2. And so this whole expression simplifies to pi over 4 plus 2 times the natural log of 2, which is our answer. That concludes this review of definite integration. If you have questions, please reach out. In the next video, we'll briefly review the fundamental theorem of calculus.